Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Tony. This is a 15 minute gamer. And in today's video, I noticed there wasn't like loads of how to get started in gamma videos out there. And there were some things I would have found useful when starting my gameplay playing through that sort of thing so in this video i'll go over the basics of the game how to get set up what things mean and how to play and complete the first couple of tutorial missions as this game offers very little on board and here there's no signposts to tell you what to do as always this guide is going to cover the basics i'm going to keep it simple so there's nothing too complicated in here and of course if you have any questions leave them below in the comments if you enjoyed the video, drop the like and subscribe for more content. Right, let's get into it. So the first thing to make you aware of is all the settings in the game. So there's two places you can go here. Obviously settings is your game settings. So in here you can do sound, graphics and stuff like that. Coming out of here is the mod configuration menu. Now with this you'll have loads and loads and loads of mods installed they can all be amended inside here i would recommend you don't but there might be something that you're a bit like uh yeah I'm, i'd you know i don't want that much blood pool <laughs> you don't you don't know um so yeah you can change things in there so just that's to make you aware of where you can change certain things you might want to change your sound graphics make it look a bit better if it's running a bit slow turn some stuff down that's where you find them all right let's click new game now this screen may look a little bit complicated but it's not really first off we're going to look at the character selection up here this is your relation so red means bad yellowy greeny sort of color means good so when you're changing factions bear in mind this will make it harder because in this case these guys like you them guys don't if we click on faction and go to them can you see if you want to be a pacifist player because more people are liking you if we go to them you see how it changes each time so yeah you can uh, have a look around and see what takes your fancy i know mean, they're like military dudes you see nobody likes them <laughs> so yeah if you want a super hard playthrough it might be for you but i would recommend for all new players just select these guys which are the loners or free stalkers next up is your portrait now this makes zero difference you might want to select a little face uh, we'll have that guy there. It makes no difference. There's a name. Again, doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but if you want to change it, that's how you do it. Moving down to location. Now, I would recommend always, if you're a new player, selecting Rookie Village because that's where the tutorial missions are. You'll get some kits, some gear. You'll learn how the game works. So I would just recommend, if you're going to do it, just select Rookie Village. The other two are just two other locations. Um the offering you won't get onboarding experience so maybe later on once you've played the game you might want to uh, but yeah just select rookie moving on to infantry i would i mean we'll come back to that but this is all stuff that's given to you so you'll have this no matter what when you start so you'll see you've got some food you've got some pda stuff you've got some bandages your knife in the bag and some vodka down here is where it's important though, 1700 points remaining. This is dictated by this box here, which is progression difficulty. Tourist, you'll get 1700. Scavenger, you'll get 1400. Survivalist, you'll get 1100, okay? So tourist is the easiest one, scavenger, and then survivalist. You'll also notice on this side here, your weapons will also change. So you get a greater amount of weapons if you leave it a tourist. Again, if you're new to the game, I would just recommend you leave it as tourist and give yourself the most amount of points. Gameplay difficulty, very self-explanatory. So you got easy, medium or hard. I usually play on medium tourist just because I like having lots of points. But yeah, so easy and tourist if that's the sort of thing you want. Moving on down here to the options menu. If you hover over any of these little boxes, it'll tell you exactly what this mode does. And as you can see, that one, for example, is not compatible with story mode. That is not compatible with warfare mode. Warfare mode is not compatible with story mode 
or survival mode. So just bear that in mind if you're going to select something else to play around. If you're a new player, I would recommend you leave story mode on. Survival mode is zombies and you get hordes. Accessible zones, what they are, is the certain areas on the map that you have to explore to find and you'll find the pathways between them. If you leave that ticked, then they will um, all be there. If you put it unticked, then you'll have to go out and find them. For new players, it's kind of up to you. If you want to do lots of exploring, turn it off. If you're just happy just to see the whole map, leave it on. Warfare mode basically means that it's absolute madness. There's loads of fighting goes on. All your factions are causing bother. It's a lot of fun if you just want something a bit more fun to play. Iron Man mode, you die. That's it. You save games deleted. Game over. That's as basic as that. I would recommend you do not touch that mode at all for the moment. Campfire mode is dealt with by a mod. Basically, in the original game, you had to save at a campfire if you selected that. So that you, or you couldn't save whenever you wanted. I would always turn that off anyway. Uh, because I like to save when I want to save. I don't want to be restricted. But again, that's something you can do in the game. Agony mode, this prevents you from saving your progress if you're injured, bleeding. So, you know, if you're, again, just making it harder <laughs> for yourself. Timer mode, it'll just save your game every so often. So if you forget to save, at least you can set that within 10 minutes and it'll save for you. Now, the most exciting thing on here is the loader. Oh, okay. also, you can click randomize and it'll create a randomized setup for you. Loadout is the things you're going to take with you. Each of these has a points value, which will then be taken off your points here. So if I add this gun, so with 1,700, if I add that gun, we're down to 1,200. Okay, so these are all the extra things you're going to take with you. Now, the first two things I would look at is a weapon and some armor. Now, you have more choices on weapons. And as I said, if you change the difficulty, that will change uh, what weapons. So if we say, look at this uh, long barrel shotgun, if I move it to survivalist, that's gone. Now, what I would recommend for new players is weapons wise, I would bring a shotgun. The two shotguns I would say are the best are this shotgun here, the TOS 34, and also the TOS 34 sawn off shotgun. Now, if you notice, that's 400 points. That's 600 points, so it's up to you. I usually just go for this gun. It is good enough. And also you can use it within Tourist, Scavenger, and Survivalist as well. And all you do is double-click on it to move it across. If you want to look, it'll tell you all about it. So it'll tell you how good its accuracy, handling, damage, fire rate, and mag size. Why I like this gun is because the ammo is pretty easy to find, and it's a point-and-shoot. Just point in the direction of the thing, and it's probably going to die. So, yeah, we will bring that. Now we're down to 1,300 points. Armor-wise, you don't have a massive choice. You have this one here, which is the Sunrise Stalker suit. And then you have the leather jacket. Now, if you're playing on hard, I would recommend, well, on progression survivalist, I would just recommend you bring this just because of the points. When you're playing in the easier mode, I would just grab the better armor. Bear in mind, armor is easiest to find out there. And also, it's pretty easy to repair. So that's two things to bear in mind, but we're just going to grab this stalker suit. We have 800 points left. Next, if we go back to the top, don't grab this because you'll get in the mission. Don't grab the, the sleeping bag because it's pretty pointless and I think you get it pretty early on. So don't worry about that. Grab your respirator. You will need that. So grab it. Also grab your field cooking kit as well. It's 25 points. It's not loads, so grab it. Handguns, I wouldn't bother. Water, always important to have. Plus it's quite expensive in the zone, so you might as well just grab it. Next up, this is a great place to talk about these symbols beside all these meds. I would recommend you take a lot of meds. We'll start off with um, yeah the AI2 field kit. Med kit. If you've ever played Tarkov, that's the cheese. 
basically. And meds are so expensive once you get in the game, it's worthwhile picking them up now. So when you're looking at this screen, it'll give you a little bit of a hint towards what it is and tell you about it and the properties. So if you look at this one, you'll see it's got two symbols beside it. It's got the radiation symbol and a heart symbol. So obviously the radiation ones remove radiation and then this removes bleeding. And as you can see, when you use it, it'll heal head, torso, arms, and legs. That's the H, T, A, and L, and shows you how much it's going to do of each. So ones like these will increase your overall health pool, so it'll like improve your health on them, but it won't fix them. Like It won't permanently fix them. To permanently fix them, you need these ones with like the white beside them. And can you see how it says post heals, H, T, A, and L? This will actually like fix your thing completely. <laughs> so it kind of makes it work like that. So these ones here, these are like psych resistance. There is them issues <laughs> without spoiling too much as them issues in the game so yeah um they help with psych you've got food related ones here so you can see it removes dizziness and offers you some uh, food basically and you've got tourniquets which basically stop blood loss and you can see there by the blood symbol so yeah there's a couple of different symbols to get used to there as i said these things cost a load of money once you're out there so it's worthwhile picking up now I said meds get expensive once you're in the zone, so it's worthwhile playing around, but it depends how many points you've got left to what you bring with you. There's no hard and fast rule because you might play quite nicely and not need many of them. You might be in lots of radiation zones, so you need lots of radiation type ones. Um, you might want to spend your points on getting another gun. Um, so yeah, it's kind of up to you what you spend them on. And here's a beautiful day in the zone. Right, first thing I want you to do is press tab to bring up your infantry. And we're going to equip everything we need to equip. So first thing is your armor. Next thing is your backpack. So you just click and drag or double click. It's up to you. Respirator in there. We also want to put our PDA by double clicking and also echo detector as well. You can see the F1 and F2 buttons for your quick um, select for your meds. Next up, what I want you to do is press escape, go to settings, go to gameplay, go to progression difficulty, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and go limited bolts and untick. The reason for that is bolts are used to find anomalies. Anomalies are swirly little bits of blurriness. If you step in them, you'll die. Only have a limited amount of them is really annoying and a bit of the game. There's also there's a lot of things to manage in this game and a couple of bolts just isn't for me. So I always put unlimited bolts on. To bring a bolt out, you just press five and you kind of throw them like that and then you'll be able to see the anomaly. Um, so yeah, that's what you do. Right. This is the village. Yay, we are here. These NPCs can all be talked to and interacted with. They will have quests. They will have things to say to you. You can even have them as companions later on. They're all friendly. They will protect this village with their lives. This is a campfire. Remember we told them before. This is where you can cook. So, you know, you can get your uh, cooking stuff out and... Um, cook meat and stuff like that there's a couple of little things down here you can have a look if you want to explore some beds if you want to sleep and um, a couple of things to pick up and sometimes there's stuff down there most often there's not but yeah, it's always worthwhile having a little look around there's another one just here as well so you may have noticed little messages pop up on the left hand side they happen throughout the game world organically and like people will talk to you and like ask for help and stuff like that to bring up your PDA, it's caps lock. Okay, here's your PDA. And you can look around by holding the left mouse button. We'll click and drag. You can zoom out with scroll wheel. Like so. I said then just left. This is the zone. All these little arrows is how you get from area to area. So that'll take you to Corden. That'll take you to the dark scape, to dark valley. So you can see there. Um... The messages on the side, if you click on messages on the left-hand side, you'll be able to see 
all the um, interesting things there that um, people have been seeing. There's also a full guide which tells you all about everything in the thing. So you can see, tells you how to fast travel, shows you all the people you've known and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's caps lock to bring that up. So the main guy we want to speak to is this one just beside this house. So you've got the campfire, you've got the two little underground things, and then this dude sitting right here. He's called Fnatic, and he will give us our first tutorial quest. So, you know, I can actually use a little help. I'm ready to learn. So when you're chatting, you'll normally see some text display at the top. And then you just select your answer down here so you know I can actually use a little help. So there you go. He's give us a little mission. Excellent. Let's teach you how to hunt mutants. So this is called training day boar hunting. We can also ask him about himself if we want. And then we can say peace. And there we go. We're going to go off and do that mission. He will follow you and come with you on the mission eventually. There you go, you see. Press 3 to get your gun out. Now, with the mods, this looks way better. So we're going to follow him. Now, if I get my PDE out, one thing to point out is if we go to area map, can you see it's now marked with a little white symbol where we need to go to do this mission. So we're basically just heading that way, which is east. All right, let's go east. I'm glad we've got a good day for this because sometimes you get really miserable days. Now, when you're out in the zone, the two things you need to look out for are wibbly, wobbly distortion things. They are anomalies. If you step in them, you will die. Well, you'll get injured or die. It depends what mood it's in. The next thing you need to look out for is radiation zones. When you step in one of them, the screen will go all fuzzy and you'll hear a little like radiation noise. That's your cue to get out of there. Obviously, once you get better armor, you get protection, you get meds, you can spend longer in there. I would suggest you just don't go in for the moment. Right, we're going to head over here. Oh, he's seen something. He is shooting them. I think that's one of them down there. I think. Yep. I mean, since our trainer mission, he's just taking it out. He's just like, yeah, screw it. Right, let's see if there's any more around here. In the actual normal anomaly gameplay, there's a bridge up here, and you'd kind of lead them, you see up there, and you'd kind of lead them over there. Um, and then he would... Oh, good. Oh, he's got one, he's getting one, he's getting one. Right, there we go. Dude, be careful. Straight in the face. Good, right. Once you've done that, you can also click over here, press F to check, uh, chop body, and you can loot all. And then you can cook that meat. And then if we talk to him, hello. Phew, that was crazy. What now? And then he wants us to do the next mission. So he will follow us over there. We're going to reload our gun. Now, this is where you get a artifact. Um, there is radiation to contend with and anomalies. So it'll teach you everything you need to know about the game. And if we get our PDA, so we'll just grab our PDA, click on it. It's basically um, there. And here is the lovely little dangerous zone. <laughs> it is awful. And you'll probably get killed the first time you try it. There is a couple of tricks to get through it. So when you get here, you want to head to this area properly. Otherwise, like the mission won't kick off the wrong word. But yeah, you just kind of get beside this sign here to get the mission to start. There we go. See, training day. Speak to Fnatic. So we just need to find out where he is now. Because he has probably vanished. There we go. Hey, dude. Right. He's going to tell us what to do. So this pit is full of gravitational anomalies. He wants us to get the jellyfish artifact. Um, he's already got an echo. That's fine. There's a container. That's the lead line container. Yeah. Great. Anything else? He's got some vodka in case we get too radiated. And some bolts. But we have unlimited bolts. So we don't care. All right. See you later. This is your detector here. So what you want to do is press five to get your ball out and six to get this out as well. Right, let's, I'll show you what an anomaly looks like because we haven't kind of seen one now. Um, can you see there? So if we throw something, can you see the ball? So that's how you find your safe route down. Now, most of the time, now I'm saying every time, there's a bit of a, I wouldn't say a cheese way through it, but if you just come to this pipe here, 
We'll double check. Yep, looks fine to me. Jump on it. Go down. We should be able to avoid. I don't think there's any around here. There's one there. That's fine. The thing we need is around here somewhere. So we'll just... There we go. Grab it. And then you come down here. Around here. No, there's nothing there. That's all right. <laughs> Up here. Through this tree. And out. That is the safest way to do it. And the quickest way to do it. Now, Fnatic might have stayed here. He might have moved. So, yeah, if you didn't get that, basically, you throw the bolts at the anomalies. You'll be able to see them. And this thing in your hand will get the artifacts. Now, we're going to go in here, and we're going to pop that into there. And that will stop giving me radiation, which is always a nice thing. Of course, at this point, if we take in some radiation damage, which we have taken a little bit, we could have a little bit of vodka uh, to take it away. So, you just click on it, use... And that'll take anyway. Right, and it wants us to go and speak to Fnatic, who hopefully will be over here somewhere. However, he might have. Let's look at our PDA. Yep, he's went home. That's fine, we will walk over. Oh, getting a bit... <laughs> I've had, had a bottle of vodka now. Don't worry, this is just the way... This is how you survive the zone. You know, you need some vodka once in a while. All right, let's head back to the village. And here we are, back at Fnatic. So we're just going to go up to him. We're going to speak to him and get our yeah, reward. Hi, dude. Hey, I got the artifact. Yay! So there you go. I can see an experience. So let's head back to the village. We'll continue our training. We're already there. That sure was something. So now he wants us um, here. We've completed that. we got a sleeping bag. What is the challenge? Next, he wants us to find a stash in the village. So we're going to click see you later. And now we need to find a stash. The majority of the time, it's in this building here, and if not, it's in the roof of a building. So that's your hint, that go up to a roof of all the buildings. Now, each time I've done this, and I've started this game a couple of times now, it's been up here. There we go. That should be it. So we're just going to go across there, go across there, look in. We've got a ball. We'll take the ball. There we go. Beautiful. We'll drop down. It's not... I mean, I have seen other playthroughs where it's in the building opposite. Generally, it's in there. You can spend half an hour looking around or just have a look in. All right. And we're going to go back and get a reward. Hey, dude. Found it. It was empty, though. Yay. Okay, good. We can also, at this point, check if he wants any more work done. So, you'll say destroy the mutant layer. It's a little bit difficult at the moment. You may want to attempt it. You may not. Uh, you can see I'll do it. You might as well pick it up. What's handy in this is because the dynamic events, if you pick this up and an NPC goes and destroys it, you can hand the quest in. It's really handy. Right. Peace to you. So that is your little tutorial done. That's it. That's the game. You can go up to these people um and he will say yes there's some work where can i find them and there you go he said right go to the great swamps and find that so there you go there's another mission done and then you'll get like experience and stuff with them as you do it now we're gonna go to the trader so if we head back here to the back of the village go through here and if you ever get stuck or lost get your pd out you can see that it shows important people in trader so yeah it's just this little underground thing here so we'll just walk out the back of the village. This dude here does have missions and quests he can give you. So again, click on him. Tell me about yourself. He'll let you know who he is. Is there any work you want done? Now, if you're going to take any mission out of him, I would recommend this tourist safari one. It's, it's all right. It's not too difficult. It's not too hard. It's just there. And then you can click have anything else. And then rescue the courier, which is much harder. So I would recommend you do to do this one. And then bye. You can take any of them. Right, and then down here, down the stairs. Do, 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 do. Lovely little thing. We open this big door here. Now, this box here can be used as storage. It's always worthwhile checking them, though, because you never know. And then we go and speak to this guy. Um, so he has a little thing, fresh face. I've seen you around here before. You can go to then buy. Um, so this is all stuff he has for sale. This is all st stuff you can sell him. You just double click and move it around to what you want. If we have a look at these, like a bandage, like 
899 rubles. If we have a look at that, 886. So things are expensive. That's why you use your points at the beginning because it's just bare. So yeah, you can buy all the stuff off them. Also, you can get information on stashes. They cost a load of money though. I heard you have a promise in the venture. Um, is there any work you want done? So again, you can do some contract killing or whatever. You can click, have you got anything else? You can do some banded stuff. Um, you can purchase hidden routes. You can find new people. You can have blackjack if you want to do some gambling. Uh, you can do some armor. So yeah, this is where you then start getting some more quests, some more missions. You start getting out there and exploring and selling the stuff you've bought. And that is... Your basic guide to Stalker Gamma, or normally whichever one you're playing. That, that's it. That's where you now go off and do your missions and have some fun and work it all out yourself. Um, the game doesn't tell you any of that. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the steps you want to take to get started. That's how you do the first couple of tutorial missions. That's how you pick up some quests. And that's how you do things. As I said, remember, all these guys have something to say oh, yeah. or something to do. So there you go. You need some dog meat. Okay, I'll do it. Because if you pick up some dog meat, that's fine. Um, nay, I want to ask you something. I'm looking for work. Where can I find artifacts? That kind of thing. And yeah, go off and do it. Go and have some fun and enjoy. And I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye.